Four years ago, Kevin Jenkins started Polax Games. Self-funded and working in secret, Kevin is proud to finally announce his first game, Empire of Ember. Empire of Ember is a first-person action RPG that takes place in a fantasy universe where magical shards, called Ember, appeared from the sky. Certain humans, called Lightbringers, discovered they were sensitive to these Ember shards, granting them the use of magic. As a Lightbringer, you play the role of a battle mage, weaving magic and weapons. Your primary weapons fall into three archetypes, melee, bow and staff. The melee archetype is for players who appreciate a high-risk, high-reward style of play that relies on timing, concentration and tactical awareness. The bow archetype rewards players with good aim through a critical hit system. Headshots do extra damage, arm shots cause enemies to drop their weapons and leg shots slow or trip enemies. The staff archetype is the most approachable with its direct attacks but includes a strategic layer by which it can do a lot of damage quickly but has a cooldown that leaves you vulnerable. Of course, as you level up in the game, you are able to customize your loadout and get higher level weapons with special modifiers. Empire of Ember allows you to build your own fully destructible city from modular, high graphical fidelity models. City building has both tactical and decorative intent. For example, walls serve to keep out enemies, but can also be stacked high to give an imposing look. Houses can give the city a lived-in feel, but can also create a maze for enemy AI to navigate. Cities, both custom and pre-designed, can come under attack or be attacked by the player and allies under your command. Cities are fully physically modelled, with each brick having its own structural integrity and joint strength. For example, enemy catapults can knock out the base of a tower, which will actually topple over and crush any units below it. The player can blow a hole in the enemy's walls, leading his army through the breach. Empire of Ember features a synchronous multiplayer, by which players can share their cities for other players to fight and rate the experience after the battle. The server considers prior ratings, which city that player has fought before, how new the map is and other factors so as to deliver high quality replayability. We feature large-scale land-based combat with up to 100 units. You can fight directly in the battle, lending your strength to where it is needed most. If you prefer a more strategic style of command, you can also enter Commander Mode, a light real-time strategy mode where units can be ordered to move, attack, hold position or follow the player. These 100 units are not imposters or some otherwise amplified AI they fight each other using the same tactics they fight the player, able to block, dodge, pick up weapons, run away, and select the best range for their various attacks and abilities. You can explore the world through a hex-based campaign map. Locations to visit include villages you can defend or trade with, custom campaign map locations, and multi-level dungeons. Traveling and other activities take time, making the world more dangerous as the game goes on. Most objects in Empire of Ember's world are physical objects that can be manipulated. With your telekinesis spell, you can throw objects to knock down or crush enemies, place exploding barrels as traps, throw enemies who have been knocked down onto spikes, or even throw corpses to knock down your still-living foes. My lord! We've had some success in our hunt. Empire of Ember's story was written by Patrick Kevin Day, a former lead writer for Telltale Games. The player must uncover the mystery of why his wizard master was murdered and what this means for himself and the world. Hotting things. Wipe them out, my lord.